This is an examination of the hidden human condition. This is the Hidden Killers Podcast. With Tony Bruschi. It is, and we're doing open lines right now, taking your calls, your opinions on the stories that we cover for you here every single day. If you want to weigh in, the phone line is there for you. You can call it 24-7. It's 888-5-KILLER. It's 888-554-5537 to weigh in on anything that we've been talking about. We got Sandra here. She wants to talk about uh, Murdoch a little bit. Hey, my name is Sandra, and I'm calling. Hey, my name is Sandra, and I'm calling from New Jersey. I've been listening to your podcast from the very beginning. I keep hearing people speculate that Alex Murdoch was there, but someone else actually murdered Maggie and Paul. My issue with that is the way they were killed. It was almost sloppy. And if you're a hired hitman or you're with the cartel, your way of killing someone is going to be very different than the way Maggie and Paul were murdered. You're going to get execution style, one bullet to the back of the head or something that doesn't. Paul was shot in the chest and then he was shot in the head. It was the way they were killed screams personal and sloppy. It To me, it doesn't scream hitman, drug cartel or somebody trying to frame Alex. I don't know. That's just my opinion. Just the way they were shot to me doesn't scream like somebody else did it. Thanks guys. Have a great day. I appreciate that. The thing is Alex world is so twisted and there's weird twists and turns and people around every corner that you don't expect that it's, it's, I think, easier to dive into some of these theories of that uh, than other cases. But at the same point, you're exactly right. Uh, cartel style, if we're thinking like Breaking Bad or Ozark or that sort of vision of cartel, you're right. It was not that whatsoever. And if you're doing a cartel hit, uh, you would typically be bringing your own weapons. It's not like, a, you know, see what happens to be available at that time and then try and commit a good crime and get out of there. Uh, so that right there, I think shoots a lot of those theories down theories that I've been pushing around a little bit as well, because I don't know, it it just seems like there could be another possibility here, but not likely at at the end of the day. Uh, it it just seems it's just more of, you know, Alec doing what Alec's going to do for himself because he doesn't seem to have any sort of sense of remorse or guilt or empathy. Uh, it's not something that exists within him. I don't think he's capable of it, which would make someone capable of committing these sort of crimes. I think that he wanted to make it look like someone else did it. Mm -hmm. Obviously that was what I think happened. And that's why I think it's so sloppy Yeah, because he's trying to make it look like someone else did it, you know, and the, and then the other thing, you know, they would have brought their own guns and left with their own guns and there wouldn't be missing guns the exact same type that were used on the victims, that would be unusual. Yeah. But I just think that he thought he could pull it off and it would look like someone else did it. But he, I just think it all comes down to that, that video. He didn't, he didn't think of that. You know, he had to admit that he was there. There. I don't know. I mean, I, I agree. I, I think I, I don't know when he, when he looks back on this, uh, does he regret it? Probably. Does he feel the emotion um, that a normal person would feel uh, doing something like that? No. No. He's a guy who'd been stealing millions of dollars from people for years. Yeah. And if you're doing that, you don't have remorse. You're entitled. It's like, well, I need the money. Yeah. And anybody who's an embezzler or anything, a murderer. You know, a lot of people might embezzle and feel bad about it. But I think people like Alec Murdoch, he's not. I, I he, just, he continued to do it. I stick with the family annihilator uh, thing, which makes sense to me of someone who could not deal with the idea of the closest people to him in his life 
looking at him with scorn and hate and anger and resentment and disrespect and all of that. Basically, everything that he tried to put himself up to be image-wise in front of these people. And they were the last people in his life, I think, that still had some respect for him, were, were his wife and his kids. He, he knew everything else on the outside was going to come tumbling down or already had begun to come tumbling down. With this, these were the last people that were there. And rather than be able to feel that, feel that scorn, feel that shame, uh, the feeling of the shame with individuals like this is so incredibly powerful and unacceptable and I think overwhelming to a point where they can't handle it, that it's a better option in their mind to eliminate those people who would be feeling that towards you and expressing that towards you so they can't show you that when all the cards come tumbling down versus letting them feel that and being out there. And that's where I think he did it. Why did he not? Why did he not kill uh, Buster? I I don't know. I don't think maybe he wasn't readily available to do so with. I think it, a lot of the motivation goes back to the boating accident. Yeah. Because she, I was reading the other day where she had, there was proof like photographic proof that she knew about his drinking and he had a drinking problem. And so I think she was going to have to testify. I think that whole thing, it was getting really complicated. I think she was figuring out his financial um, terror of other people. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It was was all about to blow up on the home front too. And that's where it comes down to. He couldn't handle that. He couldn't process that. Uh, And with those two being gone... They're gone. Now his life's easier. And that's one thing less that he uh, wouldn't have to endure. Uh, I mean, it's it's all, you know, this is all the bed that he made. But, yes. but there, yes. are, there are people that you confront them on certain things, specifically narcissists and people that have some pers- specific type of personality disorders, that the idea of, of being responsible for something or facing reality and facing... Uh, the consequences for your actions is so incredibly painful and impossible for them to do that they either just completely shut down, self-harm themselves, uh, or act out to create a distraction from what is being shown light onto, uh, or they go out and destroy whatever is, or whoever is going to be shining the light on their bullshit. And I think in this case, that's what mm-hmm. it was. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It didn't matter who it was, they can't handle it. Um, and the rest of us, well, why could he do this? Like they can't, it, it's just, it's not even part of the equation. It's the same reason why they can't feel empathy, why they can't feel those emotions. That part is missing. That part is yeah. not going through the filter, which then again, allows them to do such a heinous thing retrospectively. Can they look back and go, I, I it's horrible that I did that, but their mind was also telling them you have to do this. This is the right thing to do. You can't live if. They, they're they giving you this sort of score, and you couldn't live with that. So eliminate them. And then they die without ever having given him that sort of scorn, no matter what and, the consequences were. And this is a guy who had been, I am not sure how to exactly put this. He'd been juggling so many scams for so long yeah. that he'd have to do this to cover that and that one to cover this one. And he'd been playing this for so long That in his head, I think it was almost like a puzzle. He's constantly finding the pieces that will fit in there and there and there just to keep going. It's all he knows. All he knows is how to lie. And that's that's just life. Yeah. I mean, I think it's it's almost like the equivalency of like, you know, telling someone, um, you know what? You can't sleep anymore. And it's it's like saying stop lying is like saying don't sleep. What, What do you mean? I have to can't do that. Like I can't, I need sleep or the, yeah. with them. It's like, I need to lie because they have, they've never navigated life without lying. If you don't have the ability to lie and, and bend truths uh, and, and falsehoods into any piece of life to fit your agenda or fit how you think it should be. That's a crazy concept. They've, he's never done life like that. Mm-hmm. And, and one would never view happened. it as almost impossible to achieve if, it's it's like an addiction almost in a certain way. It's a lying addiction. It's a personality disorder, but it it's that sort of a thing where if you don't do it, what do you mean? How how do I 
survive. And I don't think that he knows any other way. Let's do one more call in Murdoch here while we got it. It's a short one. Uh, yeah, let's hear it. Hi, I'm Elizabeth. I'm Elizabeth, and I'm calling from New York, and I've been following the case. And I'm just wondering, do you think Maggie and Paul had information that they were going to divulge either about the housekeeper's murder or the Stephen Smith murder and that Alex killed them because the truth was going to come out? You know, I don't know that anyone was sitting there holding it over his head like you know if you don't do this alex you know we're gonna we're gonna talk about the this or that but i i do think they had knowledge of things that he had been involved with or had done or has done that we don't know about yet and i think that was part of the equation in alex's mind of well if this card falls that card's gonna fall and these people to get away are gonna use uh some of these bad acts that I've done against me in their own life raft to get the fuck away from me. Uh, so again, let's get rid of these people because again, this is another thorn that could be in his side. Uh, had they continued to live and the rest of his financial crimes and such continue to fall down around him. I think that she definitely is, has a point. I don't know that that was exact. I don't know. Who knows? No. That was exactly his motivation because I do know that or had heard anyway that Maggie was becoming aware of his financial yeah. issues, their financial issues. His financial issues are hers. Yeah. And and I think there was motivation there. Like quit digging into this. If she finds out anymore, the whole house of cards tumbles down. Well, it was about to tumble down regardless whether she dug or not. And I think But I think yeah. him he was going to get sympathy. It was going to pull focus away from what was going on. And then once they're gone, they're going to not look into this boating accident anymore. He's dead. Yeah. It really simplified his life, I think, a lot. Or he thought that it would. Sense. Yeah. Do I think that what she had mentioned, that they were holding information uh, as the main motivation? No, but I think they're, the motivation, I think, is a very complex puzzle with many pieces uh, yes. to it that have different Agreed. weights. Agreed. Uh, so... Partly, sure, but was it like the only thing? Uh, no, not at all. This is an examination of the hidden human condition. This is the Hidden Killers Podcast. The Hidden Killers Podcast. With Tony Bruschi. That it is. If you want to weigh in on anything, 888-5-KILLER, 888-554-5537. Call 24-7, and we may use your opinion and call on a future episode of the show. We love hearing your voice. Be sure to press subscribe wherever you download podcasts so you don't miss any breaking updates or discussions on the cases that we're following for you right here. My name's Tony Bruschi. Stay with us.